parts of a 2v2. Once your opponent is out for good, uh, I'm sorry, once your ally is out for good, it is extremely hard because then you're, you know, of it's course two on going one. Yeah. two on one, and that's double the economy. I mean, you still do have the economy transfer, but if you don't win as soon as your uh, ally's taken out, yeah, you're then pretty you're, much screwed. Or at least take out one of your one of your opponents. Yeah. So. so we have some uh some another drop, drop coming up it looks like well, into Protoss' main base no no this is teal going over Protoss. i think he's going uh, around to the okay. blue yeah yeah see it's so confusing 2v2s it are is so confusing. very confusing but that would have been a really good drop if that wasn't a Protoss' base well it still might be a really good drop right now into the blue terrans base yeah i'm um, seeing that where is the blue terrans blue army? terrans army is i know that there's, there's half siege of their... tanks up by his ally so this could be really good yeah he has nothing in his main um, Blue Tyrant is just picking away at people right now. Just and this is a going really... Going in at the good timing. And it's crazy that he's he's going in at this perfect wow. timing. Because he's not scouting yeah. this. He's not using his scans as far as I can tell. Yeah. He's just going based really on probably impulse. Of like yeah. When is the... You know, where are these armies going to be? Well, I think as you get... Uh, I think both these players will say we're in Platinum. And I think as you're in... When you're in Platinum, I mean, if the, if what these guys do is almost exclusively 2v2, you do start to get a developer, like, a good strong sense of, like, when, when things are when the right happening. time is. Yeah. And I think it was so important for uh, Teal and Purple to push into Blue's base specifically because Blue was the only player so far who hadn't who, been touched all game. Right, but also got an expansion. So he, ha he, his, he had two bases going at full steam, base, essentially. Um, so I think now what they did with, what that, with that last move that's pretty much evened the game out to like an even keel. So now we have uh, you know, Zerg's, uh, Zerg's main being rebuilt one more time. Um, Getting a spire, it looks like. Yeah, getting a spire. I, I think that's probably the right decision at this point. Yeah. You know, he's going to be behind economically. He's he's not out of the game, but he's very behind. Um, having a spire will allow him to just be able to at least pull off some harasses. I like it, and also, but also, I like the idea of using this using the mutes to counter the dropships, um, the medevac dropships. Uh, that are being so effective at taking out both of the his allies' bases on this map. So if you if you catch those dropships full, right at the wrong position, you can just take out so many units instantly. And so now we have a uh, blue Terran looking to expand to gold, trying to kill this gold mineral off. Well, actually, I saw that in the chat the red uh, the red zerg actually asked him to kill the gold oh, okay. expo and I'll okay. take the expo. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's probably else. That's another good idea. That way he can, uh, you know, try to get as many minerals as, as possible. Try to get back to an even game again. Yeah. But here again, we have. Teal Terran full drop just ships. dropping Three all over. Three full dropships of units coming up again into... But let's see, is this siege tank going to be able to... Oh, there's a lot no, of medevacs there's so here. many, so much infantry coming out, keeping all those units alive. And, yeah, just there's so many medevacs. What is those that? Those mutilists That's, turn around and run away like afraid. We have eight medevacs. It's like... None of those units are going to die, yeah. basically. <laughs> they're, He's going to lose his mate again. That's got to hurt over and over. But you they just, will die if he gets out of position and can't get healed from these broodlings. Um... So I do I do like that how one of Zerg building dies, how it erupts Broodlings. Yeah, it's that's a, really cool. It's a cool little touch. Yeah. I hate the way Broodlings look though. They look so like I don't know, like I feel like they could be now, whatever, that's not the, important. These these uh these mutilists need to get out of you know the range of fire from these two. Just get behind, get behind, just push these dropships away somehow. Yeah. But I, I like I like how that worked out because Blue had so much infantry there. Um right, that was able to just take out the, the all the units of Teal. And now just does get a drop just follow this is why those mutilists were a good choice what i was talking about before just following the medevacs and keeping them from um but, but um, teal has so many medevacs but now. one of teal's biggest mistakes is that he's been on the he's been the aggressor so far in this game but he has not expanded he desperately needs to yeah, expand he does now need he's to expand. you know they're the the crucial um, and we see protoss moving up with like a like a huge, huge force wall. of um stalkers and those three immortals are going to be so significant um i'm interested to see what is going to happen here because I mean, that's a lot of units he, right he's just walking around harassing some of the overlords while he you know i guess just gets ready for an attack and other um, than losing his nexus protoss really has been left alone this entire game yeah and now protoss expanding to the gold minerals also during his attack that's another thing i want to point out it's always good to it's always good to i really want to see garden shield go up here he's losing way too he really shouldn't have retreated there i think he would have been okay in that in that um I think he would have been okay in that fight. I don't think. I don't think we he had should have mutilists and marauders. I mean, it would be. I think it's going to be a half even fight. But just getting himself here he's between just these two around armies getting his stuff killed. Is, is terrible. This was an awful. You know, this guy had a decent macro game, but awful decision right here. Yeah. There's no reason to corner yourself mm -hmm. between armies. That's just a lot of times. For it. And a lot of times, I see Protoss players or anybody playing against marauders to that dealt 
sort of move in and then they'll pull back and they'll get so much stuff killed from those concuss concussive shells because you just can't retreat from them from from marauders you're just better off you're just better off committing so now we have another drop once again by teal coming with tanks and marauders into uh into blue terran's main base yeah trying to take out this reactor uh, trying to even take out the engineering bay, even though I don't, I'm not I don't so see sure any response coming decision. to this because Blue's army is on the all complete other side yeah, of the map. Yeah, they're doing a push over here, but it doesn't seem. Oh, I mean, it like it could, be it's going to be pretty effective because Teal's army is also on the other side of the map. This is almost like a little little base trade between yeah, the two exactly. Terrans. And this is, uh, like I was saying before, this is why Terran needed to expand earlier. He had the e advantage. Yeah. He had the edge. No one was going to screw. But with now him. Teal has expanded to the to the bottom island, right? Um, but you're, but you're not right, before. Like, there's way there too is late. nothing here. He might yeah. actually lose this entire main base, which means he's gonna have to rebuild. Which makes him going from pretty much being number one in this game as the aggressor and not being screwed with too mm -hmm. much to being dead last, and all because he just did not expand when he had the opportunity to. No, I agree. And you see also that you know that but that in Blue's base he's finally pushing away those tanks and. Um, forces, but here comes some void rays. Uh, wow! I hate void rays. <laughs> I actually don't like them either as a pro dust player. Um, I feel like they're very like they're very one dimensional. Oh, I never thought of them against tanks like that. Wow! Yeah, they're they're awesome against Killer. anything. Wow. Basically, blue screwed right now because because he doesn't have any. Um, I mean, those marines, those just two marines. You need a lot more. They're just gonna evaporate the void rays, and you really need to have like Vikings or something against void rays, or like just a shitload of marines. Um, and but blue also has expanded to that top island now with a floated um, Comsat command center. Um, so, you know, both Terrans staying in this game by using abusing their um, their floating buildings. And these mutes are going to be able to take out these wood rays. Yeah, but, I, mean, I mean, they, how many mutes got lost? Not that many. There was uh, two, two. Mute, two mutes were lost. But still, they those void rays took mutes down so quick because they were so warmed up already. Yeah, fully charged. Um, you see Terran here, uh, Teal Terran, trying to get all of his buildings away before being completely destroyed. Now, you know what, I think this is really interesting how you have Zerg on three bases, right? And you have Protoss on three bases. And then you have both of the Terrans taking their islands. And you have them, you know, you have Blue on his natural still. But I think it's funny how the, the both of these teams sort of have mirrored each other a little bit. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Um... Luckily, uh, you know, these uh, missile turrets push those mutilists away. Yeah. He's not going to lose the starport if he gets that repaired in time. Um, but over here, we have uh, the lost orbital command center. Yeah, I think this orbital command is, is planning to expand to the top left yeah, island. Yeah, sneak his way over sneak there. Sneak his way over, but... Uh, I guess he's yeah, going to be in creep for a does little give bit you, of a surprise. Creep gives you vision, right? So they can see that right now. Yeah. You get So that's one thing to keep in mind, and I actually forgot something too. If, if you're over Creep, he can see you. Creep gives full vision in StarCraft 2. So, should be, should be mindful of that. Now, and this is great. I mean, you see the, the Zerg player who was so far behind this whole game, who was being picked at and picked at and picked at. Now, finally, with three bases, uh, the gold isn't saturated yet, but it's you know he's basically using soon. the gold for his for those extra gas because mutes are just so gas. -heavy. But still, it's just it's a testament to expanding in general, mm -hmm. and um, also just the, econ the, you know, the the macro of Zerg. He, he was just ridiculous. The fact that he was so far behind and just because he, he kept in the game, he kept trying to expand, did not give up on getting you know new bases down constantly, put him so far ahead of Teal already, who was you know the number one slot in this game up to this now, point. Now at, at this point, I do see an advantage for the blue and red team because um, I think. They have a much bigger standing force. I mean, Protoss' force is pretty big, but for Blue, we have, you know, 12 Marauders and Siege Tanks and all those mutes for Zerg. Um, plus, you see that they also have... Um, you also see that, that, that they also have one extra mining base to the other team, right? So right now, all that all that Teal is contributing to this fight is those drop those Medivac dropships for healing. Yeah, at this point. He hasn't even landed his barracks. Let's see what happens with this attack. It looks like there's going to be a push by Protoss uh, and the Medivacs. Protoss needs to, you know, Protoss needs to make some kind of, get, you know, have some kind of victory now. Or this is GG. Yeah. But these mutes coming in to take out these void rays. But there's the a lot of stalkers there. Also, I don't know um, how this is going to turn out because there there are just a lot of stalkers there. Um, uh, that's so that that's so. Disorienting. I'm not even sure if they're uh, completely. I don't even believe they're focus firing the mutes. Uh, yeah, I, they are. He really does need to focus fire that no, he is. that He's portion of his army one at a time here. Um, but yeah, so that was that was like that was pretty good. 
Yeah, I mean, he still has a little bit, but it, I would have liked he, to he see. He needs to go in and just start taking out. Not, not. The, he wow. Needs to take How out many some SCVs is that? That's like an insane yeah. number of SCVs. He needs to actually do some damage. Oh, he, he does cancel the, the, na okay, the, the natural. Next. That's really good. And I think that, but I would have loved to see some sentries there for their guardian shield because against mutalisks and against marauders, that would have been so effective. I mean, you know, with the mutes that bouncing damage with a guardian shield, that you take no damage from the bounces. Um, now these uh, mutes are going to be enough to take out this whole army here, and this yeah. Protoss push is done. Uh, do we have anything else coming up for Protoss right now? We have like no production except for Blue Terran right now, <laughs> and who's making battleships of all things?